Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Nintendo Treehouse Live at E3 2019. I'm Audrey, and I'm here with Teresa and Demetrius. And we're about to take a look at Dragon Quest XI-S, Echoes of an Elusive Age Definitive Edition. So let's take it away. Yeah, so I just kind of want to re-hit that. Uh, yesterday in the, the Nintendo Direct, we announced that the hero of the Dragon Quest series yes. is going to be added as a fighter to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Super, super exciting. Um, in addition, so uh, the hero that's uh, the hero for Dragon Quest, Quest 11 S, um, he will be featured as a selectable fighter in addition to um, the hero from Dragon Quest 8, Dragon Quest 4, and Dragon Quest 3. So this is so a truly cool. legendary franchise, so it's so great to have it represented. In yeah, the, absolutely. Um, and so uh, for those that haven't played Dragon Quest 11 before, this is, uh, and you want to know more about the background story to the hero. Uh, this is an awesome, awesome game for you to get more Absolutely. of that background. Um, and so I'm actually going to run through a bunch of features that, you know, people that have played the Dragon Quest XI game before, you'll see some new content. Um, but, you know, this is awesome, a great starting point for anybody that hasn't picked up a Dragon Quest game in the past um, to just really dive in deep. And there's so much content for you to um, check out. So um, I'm actually in Warriors Rest Inn. We're going to start here. Um, and just to kind of give you a preview of what the story is, uh, uh, I am the Luminary, the Hero of Light, but I have been dubbed as Dark Spawn by the King. Um, something's awry. That's uh, not very nice, <laughs> no. I, I mean, I'm supposed to be bringing peace to the land, but very instead true. I'm being uh, hunted by an entire armada. So um, I've been dubbed the uh, Harbinger of Destruction, and I'm accruing some loyal companions to come along with my journey, uh, along with me and my journey to figure out what's going on and also uh, more about my past because I really don't know much about it um, yeah, you from the beginning of the game. Yeah, you kind of piece it all together, right? I, I want to learn more about that little guy. Yeah, so this little <laughs> green guy, um, he is called a Tackle. Um, they had a presence in Dragon Quest XI, but now they have even more so. And I'll actually uh, dive a little bit deeper into uh, how do you interact with them and what they actually do in the game. But for now, I just want to note him that He's really cute. He's adorable. He's awesome. <laughs> there is a purpose for you to interact with these because there are some tacos in the world that you just can't interact with. We'll leave his squiggly arms behind for now. He looks so enamored with you. He's like, <gasps> 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 He's cute. I'm enamored <laughs> with him. <laughs> so this is my party. I have uh, Silvando, uh, Veronica, and uh, her sister, Serena. Um, and... We're gonna make our way here. So this is uh, a way for me to call a horse in order to um, kind of explore the open area a lot faster. But one of the new things to um, Dragon Quest XI S is this item here, which will allow me to call a Great Saber Cat. <laughs> so Aww. the Great Saber Cat was an enemy that was available in Dragon Quest XI originally, but now I'm actually able to ride it. <laughs> and there's some weaker enemies that I could actually just knock out off. Oh, Get out. Bow right through him. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. I don't have to actually fight him. And I kind of want to come and show this view. So you can see Silvando's ship there in Horizon. We're actually going to get there a bit soon. But I want to roam around here because he's so glorious. He has his own theme song. And also, <laughs> he has this roar ability that I can actually uh, trigger enemies to come and attack me if I want them to. <laughs> but you decided to troll him and run away. <laughs> yeah, exactly, because I'm like that. <laughs> I like trolling. Um, another thing that I want to point out is this like uh, little glittery thing. This is a, a point of interest that I definitely want to interact with them because I'll find some uh, items that will help me along in my adventure, and I could always use them. I also like how you can just hop off your ride right there and just get right back on. It's not like you have to summon anything. So that's also really great. Yeah, and so I also wanted to point out that when I summon the Great Saber Cat, I use this Quick Commands menu. This is also new to the um, Definitive Edition. Um, so I'm able to kind of pick some very key items in my adventure to immediately call, and I just do that by pressing the plus button. The pocket Great Saber Cat. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh. very important. Can I, can I get one? No, he's mine. <laughs> we can, no. no. Very selfish. No oh. wonder they labeled you Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yes. No. Yes. yes. I'm kind to my friends. <laughs> Dee is being a little sassy with me today. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to board the Stallion, which is uh, an awesome name for a ship. Um, <laughs> again, this is Silvando's ship. So we're going to make our way to Puerto Valor. 
Um, so the ship is another way for you to navigate across the world of Verdrea. That's the setting for this world. And um, I kind of want to show the size of this map. It is massive. massive. It's, it's expansive. Um, so right now we're at the uh, kind of like top mid uh, east side. And we're going to make our way through that valley um, all the way to the um, sort of bottom uh, left. The one thing we want to point out is, well, as you were walking through or riding through, you saw the enemies on the screen. But going on the ship, it's a little different yeah, in the way right. that battles encounters. For a perfect example, right here. Yes, that's right. <laughs> uh, thanks for pointing out. Yeah. So while you're exploring, the enemies are out in the open, so you can ch choose to add, either interact with them or avoid them. But when you're um, going on the ship, they're a completely random encounter. And that's the more traditional kind of Dragon Quest setup. So you get a mixed match of both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here I want to show another new feature to uh, the Definitive Edition, which is ultra-fast battle speed. So I'm going to make the battles go a little bit quicker since we're a little bit um, tight on time, but a lot of content to talk about, too. Um, Puts the monsters in a groove as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, and another thing that I want to talk about is tactics. So uh, tactics is one of the incorporations to the traditional turn-based battle system. Um, this allows me to either uh, dictate how I want my my party members to uh, act, or I can ask them to just go on autopilot and choose to either like use a, a balance of offense, defense, more MP, less MP, go on defense, offense, that sort of thing. So right now I'm just gonna control um, the hero, which I cleverly named Eleven, and um, I'm just gonna go into a battle. Eric's going to go ahead and show no mercy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Eric is in the background cheering because I brought out Silvando instead. <laughs> um, but yeah, he, uh, I am going, since there's two enemies, I'm actually going to use uh, an ability. Can you use a group spell? Yeah. There we go. Oh. Oh, yeah. They didn't like that. They didn't like yeah, that at all. Not at all. <laughs> so one thing, too, you mentioned is that you're now actually moving in 3D space when fighting right there, too, as well. Mm -hmm. Right. And I can actually change that camera to a standard, like, uh, or traditional RPG exactly. uh, mode. So, yeah, right now it's a little bit more dynamic. So I can move around the character or the hero as I want Correct. to. This is such a beautiful world, too. Right? The sparkling water, the shines on the scales of the mermen. It's And the really soundtrack pretty. is amazing. Oh, speaking of. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that you brought that music? up. Yeah. yeah. So uh, one thing that's also new to the uh, Definitive Edition is Symphonic. And you might have already heard that because uh, we've been playing it so far. Um, I kind of just want to switch it back to Synthesize so you can hear that change. That Dragon Quest music just so gets you every time. <laughs> so good. Yeah. All right. So we got some more enemies. Oh, we got four enemies this time. All right. Yep. So let's see how we do in this battle. All right, casting bang. Tactics. So are you just going to plan to uh, use this character and then have your, uh, excuse me, uh, your casts kind of just do their own thing at the moment, right? Yeah, my party, I'm letting them kind of dictate their own battle scheme. I'm just letting them to fight uh, wisely. I'm just going to dictate how I want to um, my, the hero to to play. But again, this kind of shows how people can really choose how they want to, to play this game. Um, there's a lot of depth into it. Um, oh, I'm actually going to switch it back to Symphonic because it's such a glorious... Um, just I, I love the Symphonic. It's so good. It's true. It's nice to have the option, though, if you want to just play it old school for a while, yeah, switch yeah. back Absolutely. to Symphonic. Um, the other thing cool. I want to show is that uh, also new to the Definitive Edition is the changing the voice language to Japanese. So I'm actually going to go do that now. Um, you could also toggle the protagonist's voice. And uh, some people might have also noticed this whole non-battle music option. I'm actually going to get to that in just a bit. But for now, we're just uh, going to keep cruising along here to try to make our way to Puerto Valor. Which is right there. Right here. Yes, I do. Music. <laughs> the it's so glorious. It's like as you're sailing uh, across the boat and you have the AC kicking back, I'm just like, ah, <laughs> vacation. All right, so we're on the coast, and I actually think this is a good spot to talk about a new feature to the definitive definitive edition. Um, there is the setting called outfits. Mm -hmm. uh, so say that. I have specific armor that I really want to use because they're giving me pretty good stats. Um, but I don't. But there's a specific look that I want to use. I can oh, just so change cool. the look, but 
but not have to actually equip it and change my stats. Which is really cool. Yeah, exactly. So I can just personalize however I want um, my, my guys to look. So oh, that, that, was, that was snazzy. Almost. I'm actually going to change the uh, look for all of my characters here right now. And that's so nice to not have to compromise your stats for style. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at them. They look fabulous. So I'm actually, let's see, let's move. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> he just showed up. It looked great for that let's moment. Let's right into a fight. <laughs> yes. I'm actually going to run away from this one. Oh, what? No, fight. But I can't. Fight, fight. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no so smooches. That's not what I wanted. They're making but kissy faces at you. Those big green lips, come on. Yeah. Gosh, darn it. All right. <laughs> You'll be okay. You got this. I love Silvano, like, slicking his hair back. <laughs> Such a great character. <laughs> Charming, even the smackers. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there we go. So good. And that was also a good point to hear the Japanese audio. Uh -huh. Yes, exactly. Okay, uh, let's move over here. I'm going to bring up the quick commands again and activate uh, photo mode. Um, this was a feature that was available previously in the original Dragon Quest XI game, but I want to highlight this moment because of all of these glorious um, <laughs> costumes. So I'm actually going to have them look this way. Oh. Thank you, guys. Uh, thumbs up. Excellent. <laughs> so, uh, but let's take a photo. Yes. Oh, very nice. oh wait, I didn't get not nah, Yeah, there you are. You're so tiny. There. <laughs> I'll keep that one. All righty. Let's move along up to up to the shore and uh, see what other sightings we have. OK, and then we're making our way. All right. Oh, you sure you don't want to fight those enemies? There was something <laughs> I did want to mention that I forgot. So the Trudane outfit, which um, the hero is wearing right now, um, this is actually going to be available in a DLC bundle. Um, and the cool thing about this outfit in particular is that option that I said I was going to talk, which is this. This outfit will open this option for you to switch the um, non-battle music to Dragon Quest VIII. So That's I'm going to really actually cool. turn that on so fans can actually listen to it. But it is pretty magical it's for Dragon Quest. So Pets. good. Yeah. All right. Is it really cool? And then we're looking for a particular enemy. Yeah. So these are slime knights. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a specific slime knight that I'm looking for. Where is he? Got all these this different one. terrains and areas that we've been to already. Yeah. So some enemies, the <laughs> they don't glitter. Wow, he's running away from me. No. Oh. You. Why would you do that? <laughs> you coward. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> so anyway, um, what yeah. I was going to say is that some night, uh, some enemies are glittering, and those are the ones that I know that uh, they I can mount those, uh, use them as a ride uh, once I defeat them. Unfortunately, they've. They, they are super cowardly the today, yeah. and they fled the scene, and I really, really wanted to show them. So I'm actually going to, let's oh, see. Oh, oh, I see some Oh, more. I see one. Is this one? Maybe. Not shiny. No, no I don't want you. <laughs> <laughs> of course, he's not a coward. Go away. Oh, oh. oh, oh yeah, there we go. I'm just going yes. straight for it. Yeah. Because I don't want him to run away. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. We got some additional folks here, so okay. Yep. So, uh, D, as you had mentioned, um, I am able to dictate every single party member. Yes. Uh, I can also move them around. Uh, I just, I really don't want to right now. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's cool to have that out. Dang. Goodbye. Oh, okay. That's why they were running away. They're getting one shot. Oh, oh nice heal, Thank though. you, Serena. All right. So there's yes, all different high. kinds, too. So it looks like also one thing we probably should cover is just like the different abilities everyone has. I know that you're kind of using your sword, you're in primary attacks, but we do have people who are kind of like in different roles, right? Yeah, for sure. So uh, this being an RPG, battles are super, super important because it gives everybody um, XP. So before I uh, get on this guy, this I want to show... <laughs> I want to show the character builder. So at Diaz, you had mentioned that um, when you battle, you get XP, and then those points you can actually put into um, uh, play, uh, each Abilities. character's like character tree, and you can dictate how you want that. So um, I actually need some work here because I hadn't put these in. <laughs> Funny <laughs> enough, but. Um, this is, I'm increasing pep, which is something that I didn't talk, which is very uh, key in battle. Um, as, as you keep battling, uh, player, uh, the characters will get pepped up. And what pepped up does is that there will be this blue aura around them, and uh, it will increase their attack and defense. If multi multiple party members in my team are pepped up, 
I can execute some gnarly combo moves. Um, and it, it, it does vary depending on which team members I have in my party. But they're really cool to see, definitely. Oh, they're so cool to see. I really, really like them. So um, Let's get on this fly More ride. importantly. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a, um, yes. so Slime Knight, again, was an enemy that was available <laughs> in Dragon Quest XI, but now he's also a ride, and I look absolutely silly, but awesome. <laughs> this is so great. This. The knight's just hanging on for dear life. <laughs> yeah, and so I could also, like, take out, similar to the Great Saber Cat, I could also take out some weak enemies by just swinging my sword at them. But these guys are not weak. I'm pretty sure I'm going to trigger a battle if I s slash at them. So we're going to bounce, bounce away. Bounce away. Bounce away. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we made it to our destination. Yeah, yeah. We can get used to the map. I'm like already reading all these things. I'm just paying attention to too much these <laughs> little tips. There's so much to this game. It's oh, really yeah, so absolutely. Deep. It, the, the game itself is already expansive enough, but now with the added content uh, that's too new to the Definitive Edition, it just adds a lot more time, a lot more new experiences. It's just such a great game. It's an RPG lover's dream. Yeah, I'm looking yeah. forward really to is. trying different play styles too. From like, I, I've seen you play this quite a bit. And now I'm interested to really play it myself and in different various ways. Yeah. And what's also really cool about this game is that the worlds are just so... They're, the world is enormous. The cities are gorgeous, super detailed. I, I spent a lot of hours just exploring and interacting with all the characters just to see like what's going on. Um, another cool thing that I want to show before um, we keep moving on to is I'm going to open the quick commands and uh, uh, some players might have noticed the Fun Size Forge for those who have played Dragon Quest XI before. Now you can call it whenever you want to and not just at a campsite. So whenever you want to craft an item, you can do it. Um, just summon up the quick commands. Just pop out your pocket forge. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's fun size. You yeah. just pull it out. <laughs> um, so the cool thing about forging your own weapons is that you can keep recrafting it if you don't um, get the right stats that you want. Um, you could also kind of see like how it ends up changing uh, specific characters. Um, so I'm actually going to try to gonna build a shield? shield. Yeah, I'm actually going to build a shield uh, for uh, Serena. Yes. And if I don't have the items in order to craft that weapon, I could always, or yeah, I can buy those items. Um, and the cool thing about the Fun Size Forge is it's, it plays like a mini game where I want to keep bashing it until I hit the green area. And I definitely want, if I hit it right where that um, little edge is, I get perfect stats. So I want to try to aim for oh. that. But that was a little bit too too hard of a, a hammer. Oh, that was good. Oh, that's good. All right, yeah. so that I got two. Let's see. Almost there. Yeah. For watching with bated breath. Right I know, now? right? <laughs> no, I think I'm going to keep it this way because otherwise I'm, I'm going to go press over. my luck. And I, I just don't, I don't want to. <laughs> I'm feeling say, lucky, but not that lucky. You should be grateful, I'm yeah. sure. New shield. Get. All right, Success. Perfect. Success. Nice. So as you saw, like the sh scale shield plus two, uh, I was able to craft that. Usually at stores, you wouldn't be able to get those improved stats. So that's why it's definitely awesome to craft your own um, gear and weapons. Um, the other thing, too, is every time that you craft something, you get these perfectionist pearls. And they're key items for you to rework and equip uh, an item that you just didn't get those stats that you wanted. So you could just do it again. Excellent. Um, so yeah, as I had mentioned, I was going to equip Serena. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. There oh, she didn't go. even have a shield. Yeah, now she does. Poor girl. All right, now we keep making our way. We're going to go in here. So we're going to go ahead and enter the church. And the church and campsites are safe areas where players won't get attacked, but the um, also places where you'll save your game. But the other cool thing that I want to show here is switching to 2D mode. So you can't automatically switch to 2D mode. You have to go to these safe areas. Um, but the other thing about uh, switching between displays, and 2D mode is new to the Definitive Edition, um, is that it will it will start you at a chapter in the game. So not quite like a seamless one-to-one uh, -one transition where you'll just pick up uh, where you left off. Correct. Um, so I'm going ahead, to go ahead and change right now. And so you'll see here that um, I actually had um, save files uh, for 
oh, one for 2D, one for mm -hmm. 3D. So then I just don't mess around with my progress. So I'm actually going to, just for uh, the sake of time, I'm going to switch over to um, another uh, prepped up system. Which is over there. And yeah. There we go. We picked a specific save file to go back to Warriors Rest In. So um, this is it. This is what. 2D mode looks like. It's um, glorious. It's, it's like a completely different experience to the game. Yeah, so. For fans who've been playing this series for a long time, this is really special to be able to see these beautiful sprite graphics and experience this. Yeah, so here's the taco again. He's just chilling by the fire because I guess it's a little bit cold. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're going to walk out and I just kind of want to show this world of Screaming. how expansive it is, <laughs> how you can collect uh, items as well, a little sparkly shine, and I want to see if I can encounter an enemy here. So the that thing... Music. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right? So in the 3D mode, uh, again, encounters, you can actually see them, but when you switch to 2D mode, it goes back to the traditional gameplay style of it being completely, like, random encounters. Yeah, this gives me flashbacks to this wow. when I was a kid. I know. Even just these menus and everything feels <laughs> like home. <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh, yeah, you got that. Destroying these Hocus Chimeras. All you right. You are annihilating them. <laughs> <laughs> so too I could too strong. Yeah. Just, just for the sake of time again, um, I'm going to actually zoom to Proto Valor rather than take Sylvando's glorious the ship. little sound effects. <laughs> It's an awesome ability. Actually, the zoom ability is also in Super Smash Bros. I was just going to say that, yeah. <laughs> All right, moving on to the next part. I love those nods. So look at how Proto Valor looks so different in 2D. Like, it's it's so, so cool. It's um, fantastic sprite work. You can see all the different colors as yeah, well. Yeah, really that, beautiful. That really make it pop. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and... Uh, casino. Yeah, let's just go into the casino. Why not? Feeling lucky, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's like... There's, there's the all... It's, so it's hopping in here. Yeah. No pun. No pun intended. <laughs> no I said pun it was intended. hopping in here, but there, there was no pun there. So, <laughs> well I can, done. That was my job, I well thought. Done. Sorry. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> you know what? I'm not I'm not feeling incredibly lucky. I'm just going to explore the town a little bit more and you see. You just wanted to make the hopping joke. I know. I know. <laughs> no. I mean, I am mad. <laughs> no, I was mad. <laughs> oh, gosh darn it. All right. Um, <laughs> so... Uh, another really cool thing about 2D mode that I actually want to um, really show uh, fans out there. Um, We're going to go show the, the other part? Yeah, we do. Uh, so I'm actually going to stop here and switch over to another system to show... Uh, so we, we talked about the tacos. There is a purpose why they are in this mm -hmm. world. To um, be adorable. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Um, the other reason is that they are the way for you to travel to past DQ worlds. Um, in the uh, 3DS version of this game that only released in Japan, um, there was a Street Pass dungeon that you would play as Tackles, and then at the end you would get the scroll to, that would unlock a, a past DQ world. That uh, system has been reimagined uh, by Square Enix to uh, incorporate the tacos more into the world. And so as you progress through the story, you'll interact with them and they'll give you a password. It's a, a playoff password. It's really clever. Um, and so that password will give you um, a chapter of a world. So for example, the Altar of Origins is actually Dragon Quest I. Oh, wow. And when I get a password, I will get one of these um, chapters here. So uh, this is the echo chamber um, in the town of Tickington, which is the home of the Tockles. Um, and they, they love playing pranks on humans because uh, nobody can see them. But me being the luminary, I can see and interact with them. Um, and they love playing with time as well. I love that old one right there. <laughs> oh, yeah, with the little cane and beard. <laughs> he's so yeah, cute. he's he's really cute. <laughs> so in this echo chamber, all of these altars are a past Dragon Quest world. So um, I interacted with one, but if you go um, counter or clockwise, clockwise. yeah, sorry, <laughs> um, <laughs> you will go all the way up to 10. Um, I'm going to interact with the altar of the Cursed King, which is uh, Dragon Quest VIII. Um, and I'm actually going to go to Trudin Camp Castle uh, to go scope out what's what's happening over there. All um, right. This is going where it gets through real. time. Yeah. <laughs> the cool thing that I want to talk about with these worlds is not only do you get to see um, previews of past Dragon Quest worlds, they're all reimagined in 2D specifically for the Definitive Edition. 
Um, and they have added content, so they have extra quests for you to go um, interact with and get items so you can use in your adventure. Um, and it's super, super handy. Um, it gives you that extra um, content for you to preview through. Um, and so, because the tacos will appear at different points during your progress in the story, some of these uh, quests or worlds that you're interacting with, um, they can be pretty hard. Um, I was just about to say, this is, this is where it gets, it gets a bit of challenging. Oh yeah, absolutely. So this is actually a little bit towards uh, later in the game, so it's a, a lot more challenging. But as you can see, I will get a Sham Shear of Light uh, a reward, so um, super, super helpful. Um, and the gosh, look at these beautiful sprite graphics. They're mm -hmm. just so lovely. They really immerse you in this old school yeah, retro style world. And the music. Okay, so so I brought Eric back to my party because um, I I love Eric just as much uh -huh. as you. Um, and <laughs> these I, guys are brutal. I know. I I feel like I'm feeling a little bit lucky, but I don't know. Let's see Let's what just happens. play it by ear. Go to sleep. Okay, no. Yeah. Take a little nap. They got one of them. Oh. Okay. Some, all right, there yes. we go. We got one down. This guy is oh. like... Nice dodge, though. So you didn't take that much damage. Oh, no. Oh, oh uh, no. no. <laughs> Serena, help, please. So everyone right there was uh, hit with multiple status effects. But it looks like we're still okay on health. So you're just going to keep... Keep going through it. Press your I, luck. <laughs> I'm gonna pow through this. Let's see. I'm gonna go boom. That's the strategy. <laughs> just, keep at it. just throw magic uh -huh. at them. Okay, 69 points, 75 points. We got oh, this. Oh, come on. Swish. Go down. Oh, <laughs> come on. I need to figure out why <laughs> we're stuck in perpetual daylight because. Because of it's stuck in perpetual daylight, um, the quest said that the person has asked me to figure out what's going on because without nighttime, they can't use their magic to cure the world, uh, the world of what's happening. So I need to get there, but I'm not. You got this. Yeah, we believe. But this is just to show like how challenging like some of these battles uh -huh. can get. So you hey, definitely yeah. okay, here we go. Yeah. Down. Oh yes, Whew. you so did you it. You definitely want to get pr be prepared with all the armor and gear before you tackle some of this because look at the amount of experience. Of course, say, like, you're just gold. <laughs> so much gold. That was just a regular fight. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Imagine what the boss fight it's gonna be. Nope. We're gonna imagine what the next fight's gonna be. All right. <laughs> all right. These, oh, them. these guys. Okay. They can't stick their tongue out at you. You can't let that fly. Man. Yeah. <laughs> sassy. Everybody's sassy with me today. What is that? <laughs> Should be tables reversed here. <laughs> <laughs> They're all following these example. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. <That's what> <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my hero's not looking too good. I'm hoping Serena Ooh. will. No. Uh, Did Serena you flinch too? <laughs> so you skipped the turn. It looks like. Uh oh. Yeah, so that's the thing too that. Um, we didn't get a chance to see it, but uh, when you're in ultra fast and in 3D visuals and you have these ailments, it, it, there's like a specific one that uh, will cause the characters to dance. They're like <laughs> jamming <laughs> in the middle of the fight. It's really funny to watch, but um, yeah. <gasps> oh. oh, Eric. Okay. Oh. Eric saved the day, man. <laughs> Can you yeah. heal 11 before the next yeah. battle? Yeah, absolutely. Because it's making me nervous. I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll heal myself. <laughs> okay. You have a ton better. of MP left. You still have 206. So no, nope, I want to save it. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa's an MP hoarder. <laughs> <laughs> you got plenty. Ooh. This, oh god, these guys look, hard. Yeah, these guys are okay. looking really, really hard. I do remember the guys with the claws actually being uh -huh. really tough from what we were saying. So this this could be a challenge. So 64 points, 64 points, boom. Veronica's coming in with these like really gay okay. spell casts, so. Oh, okay, one down. Nice. One down. Nice. Oh. I take it all back. Oh, quick Veronica, work. Ron Veronica <laughs> well done. Yes. <laughs> That was 5,000 experience? Smog girl. 5, experience. Go, go, go. All right. I love the anticipation of these old Dragon Quest games where you just, you never know when an, an enemy's going to pop up and I attack know. you. It's my heart. My heart. All right. <laughs> so uh, I practiced this and so I knew exactly what the routing was, <laughs> the ideal routing. So this is the dude that's uh, actually causing perpetual daylight. So in order for me to bring back nail time, uh, nighttime, I have to uh, defeat the mighty Dale. 
the self self named mighty. Yeah, <laughs> right. Say himself named. Yeah. You are no match for the mighty Dale. <laughs> Um, oh, man. So he's gnarly, um, and I actually don't want to battle him, so we're actually going <laughs> to cut <laughs> right here. <laughs> yes, I'm save I, that for players. I am You're slime that knighting for away right now. I'm just, just going to put that out there. Bounce away. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, um, uh, this game is awesome, and uh, there's so much content here, and uh, it's coming out September uh, 27, I believe, that we announced. So, yeah, I can't wait for everyone, newcomers, Dragon Quest fans, and also uh, Smash players that haven't played this game. You know, it's it's a fun game. This uh, is the perfect time to jump into this yeah, legendary franchise. Exactly, Absolutely. especially because this is the definitive edition. So, yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Teresa Demetrius. Yes, yeah. That was Dragon Quest XI S, Echoes of an Elusive Age, the definitive, ed definitive edition. <laughs> and next up, we're going to take a look at Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, The Black Order. So stick around. <laughs> <laughs>